Good morning. Uh, here for the latest updates on COVID-19. I know you guys are overwhelmed with this constant change of information, but this is only done for your, your safety, your family's safety, your children's safety. So bear with me. These are guidelines done and they're fluid and they may change again, but again, they're only for your safety and benefit. Uh, the changes we've had is fever has been determined as a large marker for COVID patients, but also we wanna make sure if someone doesn't have a fever, but they have an underlying infection, i.e. pneumonia, uh, some form of respiratory infection that may simulate or have not been uh, actually active as a fever yet because of multiple things. If someone had taken Tylenol, Motrin, we'll cover that shortly. Uh, but we wanna make sure that you're aware of somebody with a fever and or a suspected infection, i.e. pneumonia. Uh, if they have those, either one of those two or any two of the following, and the two of the following are, we know that COVID patients are patients who have the virus that is infected into the lungs. When it goes into the lungs, they stop breathing, get shorter breath. Uh, it is transmitted by droplet, not aerosolized. So what happens is uh, the droplet will land on your mask if you wipe the mask into your face, that's how you spread the virus. What we want you to do is after every patient, wash your hands first, uh, then take your mask off, wash your hands again to make sure that you don't put any of the virus into your oral or nasal pharynx. So any two signs that the respiratory compromise has occurred is oxygen saturation less than 93, which is one criteria, caponography less than 32, which you already follow, respiratory rate greater than 20, which is part of SIRS, heart rate greater than 90, which is also part of SIRS. We're also adding a couple of things. They could be afebrile if they took Tylenol or Motrin in the last six hours. So if they've taken either one of them and they're afebrile, please document that, because that could mask the fact that they have a fever that you're not seeing. And again, this is done for your protection. Uh, so we've got the shortness of breath. We've got the heart rate. Uh, body aches is a vague thing, but flu-like symptoms, they have body aches. So just be aware. Uh, again, be safe. When you take off your PPE, make sure that you wash your hands after you're done before you touch your face. As soon as you come in contact with anybody who potentially may be a viral alert or a respiratory patient, please put a mask, and it doesn't have to be an N95 mask, any surgical mask on the patient immediately. It provides you a barrier to prevent you having the contamination of the droplets that could potentially go to you. Uh, we should have the N95 on the driver and the paramedic or the EMT and the paramedic uh, and everyone else could be fine with surgical masks. You only really need N95 if you're doing aerosolized treatments or intubation. If those people too with N95, you need to be gowned as well. So these are exactly from the CDC web website. I encourage you to look at the CDC website, validate what we're saying for yourself. Because again, we are your number one advocates and we want you to be healthy and active and you're doing an amazing job for our community. Uh, we've been very accurate with our viral alerts. Keep up the great work. Any questions, please uh, ask me at askomd.com. Uh, and we'll also follow up with some um, videos that you can see what the new protocols are. Stay safe. God bless. Good luck.